Now today we had some family business we had to work around, so I didn't want to start any major projects. But what I did want to do is get all the motorcycles run. This is probably the last day uh, that we're going to have the tank on a bike. And I always try to plan this so the tank is, uh, is empty when I do this and it never works out. But this tank, when it's full of fuel, it's a, it's a five gallon tank, so it just makes it easier if it's empty. Unfortunately, it's not empty. So the other day we finished the maintenance, put the tire on that. We know we need brake pucks in the back. We'll check the front when we do the tire. And we're keeping all the bikes charged for some nice weather. Unfortunately, uh, family stuff has gotten in the way of getting some extra rides in, but that's okay too. Thing this does is clear the exhaust system of any moisture and maybe even clean up the oil to get some oil circulating keep the, keep the engine seals nice and fresh I don't know I know it works in airplanes well, I'm not really sure if this has any benefit to fuel injection but I know keeping the float bowls full helps those Vton little tips in the shuttle stay fresh. Anytime you take an old carburetor apart and those Viton tips are dried out, those float bowls were empty. Now it's funny, the Kawasaki is the most cold-blooded of all of them. It needs to choke for a good couple of minutes before you can pull away. Just a cold-blooded motorcycle. Oh, I love the smell of two-stroke oil. <laughs> we always save this one for last. So that was one exercise that I do periodically over the winter, when possible. I try not to do it ever below 40 degrees, just because you just kill a battery. But I know in the world of real aeroplanes, they do cycle that engine through over winter months. And it seems to have worked for me. I'm not sure if it's exactly, I'm not saying everybody should do it, but it certainly has worked for me and kept all the bikes that, that maintenance is a minimum. And they're fresh and always ready to ride. And again, this was only an hour I had of a, what's going to be a family day, so I'm going to try to get out here early tomorrow morning, pull a tank, drain it, strip some of the paint, and that'll be tomorrow's job. I was glad I got this out of the way today. Well, we actually had a very nice day. If I had time today, if it wasn't a family day, I would have tried to get a ride in, but, well, it was not to be. What is that now? That's the Imperial Shuttle? Yes. That's from one of the Star Wars episodes? Yes. Well, and you're not building this with directions, you're just building this up. Yes. Would you go out to the garage for me, Miles, and take that gas tank off the uh, red motorcycle? No. Well, Miles refused to help me remove the tank, so it looks like I'm going to have to use this rainy day to get that tank off, get it cleaned out, and bring it into the shop. And I've been waiting quite a while for a, a day like today. I should have some uninterrupted time. Whenever Miles stays over, though, one of the things we do is we rearrange all the tables and have to move all the stuff out of the way because uh, you never know when a rocket's going to go flying up into the motorcycle parts. But today should be a good day. We'll use it to some advantage, and I hope I'll have that tank in the cellar very soon, right after the coffee. 
before we run out to the garage and pull that tank, I wanted to share some information. I, uh, I have several cameras. The one I use the most is a Canon PowerShot. And of course, the batteries don't last forever. They're supposed to last 300 cycles. They usually last a lot less. And they're about $47 if you buy a real Canon battery. So what I did is I wound up looking on Amazon and I bought from three different manufacturers. I didn't even get the third one yet. For $6, you get two batteries. Now, I know these are not going to be as good, but I'm going to have six of them when the rest of that order gets shipped. And I'm going to make a little report. I'm going to keep track of how many cycles each one keeps because I'm using this camera every day. This will be an interesting test. Now, these are all from China. They're all uh, who knows what brand. You never heard of these brand, Humphrey Bogart or whatever. But what, what's really, really important, that $47 battery really doesn't last 300 cycles. And I thought at one time I'd buy buying a real Canon battery. It would. Now, we'll see how these Chinese ones do. And I'll report back as soon as we know, a month or so from now. So we're finally out here, ready to pull a tank. And due to poor planning, the tank is half full of fuel. I got to dump that out in my uh, can for the snowblower gas. What I try to do, of course, once I have this apart, I'll take all the hardware polish and clean it up. But um, And I have a quick disconnect fuel line, among other things. And I'm going to have to get this gas cap off I, for the paint. I try to save this, uh, this little uh, protector, I guess, belt protector, whatever it is. Relatively straightforward job, but it's a lot easier when a tank is empty. Of course, the overflow line has to come off. And then it's tricky to get the quick disconnect fuel line apart if you don't have the tank up in the air. That makes it at least reasonable. And boy, if you don't have a quick disconnect fuel line, this can be a messy job. This was, this was really one of the best investments. I have these on all the bikes, so I can pull a tank without making a mess and getting fuel all over the shop. Every time I use this, I just think, what a great investment. And the wiring that goes to the sending unit has to come off. And then the last little thing on this bike, there's a cotter pin up in the front. The pin comes off. It's really a well, it's really a well engineered thing. So this is nice. Now, while paint is drying, uh, I'll be able to get down in here. Although that is pretty clean for a 30, 30 year old bike. I guess it's pretty clean, I don't know. I don't know what a lot of other 30 year old bikes look like. Anyway, this one is pretty decent. I've been working a little bit every day, 10, 15 minutes uh, when I have gaps of time. I want to clean by the radiator, that's one thing. Uh, get any of the, the little residual dust or dirt that's in there. And then we have this little trick thing I want to do with the lights. The headlights were built into the fairing. I have an idea. I bought some parts from Pete at Circle Cycle that will make these headlights and turn them into blinkers at the same time. I don't know if it's going to work. And like those uh, camera batteries that I just bought, we're going to find out if they work. But it's all a great adventure. Now there's one thing about this particular bike I like. I really do like the look of the FZRs. And they certainly have enough power and they handle good. But that's not the reason I really like it. For me, you sit very low on this bike. And with the, uh, the GS handlebars, those are handlebars from a GS, by the way. Very, very comfortable for my body size and shape and, uh, and fat ass. I know you're saying that. But it's, it's absolutely true. And every one of these bikes, I've made a top priority on making them comfortable and fun to ride. And they are. Now the next part of this is really, I know it's a pain in the neck because I've done it already the previous time. Getting all the fuel out of this tank is not as easy as you think. You know, it doesn't have a standard petcock and I don't want to take the petcock off and break that seal. So what I want to do is I'm going to take it out by my snowblower can and fill up the snowblower can with high test. But then there's always the last little bit of gas that stays in there. And I will not bring the tank into the house until that last little bit of gas is out of the tank. Or Karen will kill me.
Now what I did, I had a slight change of plan. See, what I was always concerned with was the seal on this, that these rings, of course, are old, they dry out, but I noticed in my inventory I have a spare one, a brand new one, so I'm not worried about that at all then. So now I don't have to deal with that being on the bike while I paint it. Now by having a sender out and by having the uh, the petcock out, now I have to get two new O-rings and a bunch of sealing washers, which I didn't want to do, but what that allowed me to do is get the last little bit of gas out conveniently. In the past, what I've done, and I'll do it now, I run a shop vac in there just to get the fumes out because I don't want to bring any of that into the house. I'm just fanatical about it. Now before that tank comes into the shop, I want even the fumes out of there. I'll let that run while I have a cup of coffee. Now any tank that's 30 years old would usually have some rust in it. This one has uh, almost none. A little bit, but nothing nothing that the filter won't take care of. Now, one of the things I have to do is carefully plan this out for a lot of reasons, because we have a little bit of damage to the tank. It was rubbing on the air box, and I'll show this up close. I'm just getting the water rough from being outside. And there is not a drop of gas. Oh, God, if there's any gas in here. If Karen even smells one drop of gas, then it'll be the late Windy Ertnowski. <laughs> Maybe my videos will sell better then. Anyway, I wanted to show this. This is a couple of the things when you're restoring a 30-year-old gas tank. So what I'm trying to do is create a little bit of material, and I don't want to make it a quarter of an inch thick. I wanted to show how I would go about doing this. Oh, I better do it though. I see it's on an angle. Try to get it as, I'm try to get it so the camera can see it. Always sand the material down. Thin CA first, put a big glob of it on. Take a clean paper towel, rub the area. What that does, the CA, the thin CA is capillary. It's gonna go down, it's already dry. It's gonna go down into the material and down into the raw metal and seal it. Now, while I have it sealed, I can take thick CA, put a nice big glob of it there, a little piece of any kind of material, e-glass, I just happens to have some on my workbench here, pat it down. Since it's not a, a part, a cosmetic part, doesn't really matter. Not gonna see it, but it's gonna that, that's where the point of the air box on the FCR rubs on that. Eventually it will wear the air box out, and maybe, it'll wear, but I don't want it wearing the tank out. First, if you look around what's happening here, pretty simple. This would not be a major problem. It's rubbing on the plastic air box, but I'm going to put a little patch of fiberglass there. Just uh, let it wear out the air box. It won't really matter. Just knowing that that's hitting there, though, I'd, what can I tell you? Of course, because the tank is rubber mounted, it, it, it floats a little bit. And I also have, if you look up here, see this is the reason I didn't want to break this seal, but I do have some new parts and I'm going to get the most important thing is to get the new washers that go around here. And I'll have to clean this all up very, very carefully. I don't want anything to drop into the tank. And then I'll put Gorilla Tape over this. That'll seal that up, but the most important thing, and because in my lifetime, I've had uh, probably three or four times I've actually witnessed people have fires from gasoline, and it's not a pretty sight. In the old days, when I used to do this uh, as a second job, and had the shop on Jan Dan Kelly Hill, we basically did, right next door was a, was a, uh, a tombstone place that for $10 would sandblast a frame, a Harley, two tanks, and two Harley fenders for $10. Well, you know what? They don't do that anymore. So I've learned, well, I've learned to do all this work in-house. And a little more work, I know, but I have complete control of it. Now, getting that clean, because I want that to seal. Once this dries out, I don't want paint dust and sawdust and everything going down in there. And I really still am curious about this gray Gorilla Tape from uh, a couple of days ago or yesterday, I don't remember. The I had this brake installed on a tire and I still am at a loss. I don't know if uh, 
if the tape is just weak because it is real Gorilla Tape, but I don't know if it comes in two industrial thicknesses, but the black tape never broke the gray tape. I don't have any black tape, so. Now I know anybody that restores an older motorcycle, you've got to pick a level of restoration. And I just want to give you an example. I was looking at uh, several YouTube videos where somebody would say, I could paint a motorcycle in six hours, you could be back riding it. Why do all that preparation? And they take a spray can without even masking off the tires and flat black out the whole bike. That is, that is truly custom, no doubt about it. But my vision is just a little bit different. Not saying who's right or wrong ever, but little things like this, where these little areas are rubbing and up around here, anything I see that's suspect, because these parts are 30 years old, and you just can't go to eBay and get one brand new. The one you get is, it may even be worse, you never know. Now, and this tank is going to have an extensive, extensive restoration, and I'll explain that soon. Now, if this were rubbing on a frame or something that might wear a hole in the tank, I'd be really worried. But I checked, it is wearing on the corner of the airbox, which on an FZR, the airbox is the size of a milk carton. Now, just as an example, I'm using the heat gun, of course, taking these off. I'll save them. I don't know if I'm going to want to use them again or get new ones or not have them on because what's going to happen, and of course you can put more contact cement or whatever. Look at this. You can use them for fly paper. Look at this. Unbelievable. That is some good glue on there. In fact, you can't let go of it. That's pretty funny. There you go. Anyway, I want to clean this off because the stripe on my concept drawing goes right through the tank, so I don't know that's going to be a problem. If I put that on, it's going to and to be honest, they were, they were useful when we were doing track days. Not, not less useful riding around on 106. So anyway, what's going to happen with this paint job, though, that's important, is the reason I bought this industrial strength Bondo, this whole area of the tank is going to get Bondoed. And also, where the clip-ons normally would be, I want to make that as if there were no clip-ons, just to make the tank a little more attractive. Again, it's all in the eye of the beholder anyway. But... I have a vision of what I like. Some people agree, some don't. Usually Karen, sometimes she agrees. But anyway, now I wanted to make another point. If you another point, if you're using a a heat gun on a tank, you don't want to have the tank cap sealed. I want it so that this air that's in here can get out. Even though I've been real careful about getting out all the gas, I would like to seal a tank as the last thing. Well, like I said, we're going to get a new one. This one fell apart, <laughs> and I get doesn't really matter. We got five years out of this restoration, and I'm sure we could have got more of it. It really wasn't in terrible shape, but everything has a shelf life, including me. And I can hear you saying now, yeah, and it, your shelf life is getting near the end, baby. <laughs> I can hear them now. Anyway, we're gonna, this is the last step. We'll clean this glue off a little bit with prep wall. These five years. But anyway, for the for five years we rode around with the Ferrari paint job, we really got our money's worth. We had a lot of laughs and a lot of, we fooled a lot of people into thinking it was a real Ferrari. Now in sealing up the cap, I can tell you a good trick that'll save you some grief. I always put, the Gorilla Tape down, that seals it now. I'm not. I'm done with the heat gun now, so I don't want any paint remover getting down in there or anything while I'm using paint remover. But also, what has happened, if you, use, if you notice, Gorilla Tape is, doesn't, paint doesn't really stick to it. So what would happen after sanding and at some point in the job, chunks of this paint would wind up in the, somewhere. And it used to annoy me. Well, the, the answer is paint sticks to the blue tape. And there's less chance a little chunk of it's going to come off and wind up in the paint job somewhere later. So that's what I've been doing lately, and it seems to work a lot better than just using the Gorilla Tape. Now this area down here, <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to get in here, even though you're not going to see this, because I, I don't want the paint to peel off and it'll wind up rusting in there. And this gets sealed. I sealed this with that accessory gas cap that I 
Luciano so graciously gave me for Christmas about five years ago, but I've gotten good use out of it. But anyway, this is just one of the spots before I do the paint remover. I want to get that cleaned up in there and make a point that, you know, up to this point, we've got several hours into this. We haven't even taken a paint off yet, but we're trying to do it to the best of our ability. Now, because I don't flip bikes and I don't try to buy a new bike every year, I like what I have. I've made the bikes comfortable to fit my behind and the handlebars that I like and the, the uh, bah, bah, whatever. And, and so having these, I don't have to go shopping for new bikes that may or may not have a, a, a crankshaft issue or whatever. I'm kind of happy with what I have, and I try to update them on a regular basis. Keep them in great shape. And the best news, this appeals to everybody. The, the four historic bikes, they're historically registered. Registration fee every year, zero. And that is a number I like. Now up to this point, I've been very methodical about getting the gas cap sealed, the little vent in the back, the two little touch-up areas that I had to do on the bottom where it was rubbing on the airbox. A lot of preparation. Didn't just take out the can of flat black and spray paint the bike. And that's the whole thing. When you restore a bike, you can pick how much time, how much energy, how much money. But, but I do this uh, because I'm not flipping bikes and I plan to keep these forever. I try to do it with a lot of a lot of TLC and it's time for the paint remover one of my favorite parts of a job this is the paint remover we've been using now today I could not sand this paint off in the shop it'd just be too too messy and this paint remover is going to allow me to get most of the paint off and then I'll have to wait until a day I can do the rest outside because I don't want to do any sanding in the house today because we have the baby coming over later this afternoon. I have an extra gallon of this just in case but anyway the good news with this material in fact you know what I'll do just to make this a little bit easier put the paper towels under here or something just to make it more stable the idea of this is and you never have to throw the brush away the brush I've used this brush on many many jobs I don't even I just rinse it with water but the idea is to get as few brush strokes in as you can it seems to go best if you can do it once and you really do need a lot of it and then you let it sit 10 minutes come back to a second coat now I know this tank there's a lot of bondo on this tank I know this is not going to be a pleasant the next hour is going to be uh, <laughs> this part of it is never fun but you save $20 worth of sandpaper doing this, that's for sure. And I want to most importantly get this edge because that's where I'm going to bondo the edge on this. And I know this tank has a lot of repairs. When I did it the first time, I was shocked. I kept peeling paint back and, and I see this is pulling the paint right up anyway. So. I'm going to just let this get the whole tank in paint remover. Try to get as much of this off today, but I can't, really can't do any sanding in the house. And since Miles didn't come out and he wouldn't take the tank off for me, he wanted to play Legos, well, I've got to respect him. I really don't, I don't like to have a lot of dust and dirt and stink in the shop when he's here. Now, as I'm shooting this video, I've used one of those new batteries, but I'm curious how many, how many cycles they're going to take. Yeah, usually I accept the fact that stuff you buy at half price is going to be half as good but if you get something at a tenth the price and it's half half as good it's it's probably a good deal but we'll report on it I got one more set of batteries coming for six dollars I can be a big spender two batteries for six dollars and one battery for forty seven ninety five well, that was a hard decision assuming they work but even if only half of them work you're still ahead Anyway, but now the, the hard part is you got to just sit and let this just do its magic or do its job, whatever. Now what I found works the best is a, a worn out spatula. And in this case, it's been sitting here. Let's just see if it's our lucky day.
And whatever I can get off, whatever doesn't come off, I'll give it a second, a third coat. That's why I bought a gallon. But it looks like we're not going to have a real problem here. But there are some paints I've I've experienced. I hear this is it's over Bondo or something here. It's yeah, it is Bondo under here. So I want to be careful. I don't take make a mess out of this. Even though I'll probably do well, I'm not probably I will do all of Bondo over. So I've got myself in. No, no point letting the camera run here. This is the boring part of it. There are times this comes right off. There are times it's really not happening for you. And you never know when. And I want to get all the paint off in here because it's where the Bondo is going to go in there. It's just going to be a labor of love from this point on. So the first coat, you got a good chunk of it off. Now I'm just going to repeat this again and again. Get as much of this off as I can. It is really... I think of how much sanding that would be to get that off. And we definitely can't sand outside today, so this, we may do th as much of this as we can inside. Now, if I could sand today, well, I'd be more inclined to, you know, just right now go out and hit it with the power sander, but I'll wait to the end. Let's see if I can get some more of that off. And we luckily, we got a whole gallon over there of it, too. A lot of areas of this tank are really going to need a lot of work. That side looks like it's all Bondo. I forgot how much Bondo was on this tank, but I'm just going to spend the rest of this session cleaning off as much of this old paint as I possibly can. It's, again, it's a labor of love, a labor of paint remover. Well, slowly but surely, one, one, it's taking a lot of work to get this off. And we still got to do the other side, but... When one, what I'm doing is I'm letting one side soak in while I work on the other side. I'm doing a little hand sanding just to get the, the last of the goop off. Now, as we're coming down the home stretch, it's always the last little bit that you just got to keep working it. And it's, as I said, it's a labor of love. But when I think of in the next couple of hours, what I'm going to have is a, what I hope, a tank that's uh, ready to do the outdoor work. And we're certainly not going to do it today, but I'm going to be able to get the uh, the other side of this tank is half Bondo, by the way. Be able to get the power sander going and get some of these shapes back the way they should be. It's a thing where you need patience to do this. Really no substitute for it. And then right at the very end, when there's no more red here, we'll wipe it with some paper towels. But the scraper gets most of it. And then I take, I save all my old sandpaper when it's worn out. Because for doing this, it gets clogged up with goop right away. And it doesn't really matter. We're going to throw it away anyway. So it's like free sandpaper. Now the side of this that has a lot of Bondo, I'm going to try to sand away enough of the Bondo that anything that shows is going to be new Bondo. And there's also a repair on the back of the other side that I, somebody has grazed it. So I'm thinking that may be a spot that what I'll want to do back there is put a little JB weld over that weld rather than Bondo. Just thinking about that. It's coming. Just slow but steady wins the race. Now what I do when I'm done with uh, the paint remover, it's pretty simple. Just get some soapy water on the brush. You don't have to use it. You don't have to get it super clean or anything. Well, I'll just dry this up. We're pretty much done with the paint remover. Yay, yay, yay. At last. Now, the rest of that will have to come off with sandpaper, but it's still raining outside, so we're limited here. Very limited. One of the, the joys of doing this kind of work is the day you're done with the paint remover. 
and we are done. And you can do the roll up and that beautiful Ferrari finish is now history. There is no evidence left. If anybody wants to sue me, Ferrari wants to sue me, they have to get in line. And because I'm going to bondo this whole area in, and look, this is where that thing has been welded already. So I'll put JB Weld there right away and let it dry over night tonight, in fact. And to get this ridge nice and clean, because I'm going to bondo that in, that's a really important part of my vision for this paint job. Now, believe it or not, the hardest part of this is that I don't have a helper here to hold the tank. I've been trying to find every possible way to jazz, hold it in, in my nose and stuff. But anyway, what, what I've done, I've got a whole box of wheels. And it looks like the blue wheel is the one, because what I'm doing is, rather than sanding it now, I'm knocking this off and creating a rough surface so that primer gets a good bond. And this will be a, a good amount of time, but when we're done, this whole tank is going to look just like that. So I did all the parts of this I could with the blue wheel, which doesn't really make as much dust as sandpaper, but the rest of it, the other side, which you can see in the mirror, that side has to be done outside, and this day did not really give us a break. It's still pouring rain out there. Now where this weld is, I've cleaned it as much as possible, both sides. I'm going to put JB Weld there instead of Bondo in that one area. That maybe stacked the deck in my favor a little bit. Now there's a couple of things about JB Weld that maybe uh, some people don't know. It's of course metal filled epoxy. And there's a version of it called Marine Tex that's even a higher tech, higher strength. Uh, product when you're doing structural stuff. But here's what's really good about JB Weld. I pre-warmed the part. I'm going to put some on here. Though the heat is going to make it more capillary. So what that means is that at a molecular level the molecules are going to link a little bit better. And so that'll be in our favor. And then I'll have to set this aside overnight to dry, but I'm done for the day anyway because Miles is coming and he's going to do all the Bondo sanding tomorrow, I'm sure, or next day. We got a lot done today. I'm not really crying the blues here. But anyway, JB Weld is, is a motorcyclist's best friend. You can do a lot of things with it. And if you need to have something even stronger, look up or get Marine Tex. JB Weld, this is about $5 worth. The Marine Tex uh, comes in bigger packages and it's a lot more money that's all I remember about it last time I used it but I fixed a boat engine with it and used it for many years and it it never broke so now the trick is and this is from the world of model planes a good trick because I use this to make exhaust systems by the way you can use this anywhere but right up in the header area to fix a muffler I'm not sure everybody knows that but here's the trick, a little bit of heat, just a little bit. If you see a bubble, any kind of a bubble, you've applied too much heat. And what that's going to do is just let that sink in, just right on the verge of having a bubble there. Now normally that's going to be bondo to maybe bondo it over, it doesn't really matter right now. This is just to stack the deck in my favor, because I saw a well there. Remember, restoring these parts, I don't know, nobody knows, where these parts were. They're, they're like mystery meat. But anyway, we really had a dynamite day of getting this in the last couple of days from the last thing of the, basically on the FZR to, we are really in the driver's seat now. And the cosmetic finishing in this part, the Bondo and everything, piece of cake. And we'll do. Now the cosmetic part of this, that's a whole separate issue. We are really ready. And if you have a passion for old motorcycles, I would suggest this is a great way to do a restoration. This has really worked well for me. Go right down to the bare metal, pay the price right up front. It's like putting a good foundation on a house. 
And once again, we're at a watershed where, well, next couple days, maybe next week or so, we'll get Steve over here to do his back masking. In the meantime, once that JB well dries tomorrow, we'll start doing our sand out and bondo with a tank. So hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.